We're here at the National Physical Laboratory, the UK's National Measurement Institute. Here, 450 scientists, engineers and mathematicians are working to ensure we measure things as accurately as possible. system and rainwater could handle this problem. This car runs on pure water. Water is the source for the hydrogen and oxygen. Electrolysis is where you convert water into hydrogen and oxygen. This one's filling up with hydrogen and this one's filling up with oxygen. The hydrogen is pumped through that tube and the oxygen is pumped through that tube. They meet at the cell in the middle where they are separated by a polymer membrane covered in platinum. The platinum in this membrane is the catalyst. It converts hydrogen into hydrogen ions that moves across the membrane and reacts with oxygen to create water. The electrons then flow through a circuit to power a motor. <laughs> this is a large cell that can produce 60 watts, about enough energy to power a light bulb. So if you think this is all something for the future, you're wrong. London buses are already using this technology. Ed works at the National Physical Laboratory. Tell us about what you're doing. I work with companies around the country who are building these fuel cells so they can understand better how they work and improve their performance and improve their durability so that they can bring down the costs so that we can all afford to buy them. So Ed, what does this do? This is a test stand which I use. It's got all the it's got all the machinery on it which we need to be able to control the fuel cell in a scientific way so that I can do experiments. And these are some reference electrodes which I use built into the fuel cell so that I can measure electrochemically how the fuel cell performs. Thank you. So there it is. Water could be used to create electricity. Enough to power a bus. And Dr. Ed Brightman and his colleagues at the MPL are working to improve this technology. This is Science Rocks in conjunction with the MPL.